So you're in front of a classroom and nothing is going right. You ask students to do something and maybe three students are doing what you asked them to do. A couple people are standing up and moving across the room. Maybe you ask them to sit down like, I gotta sharpen my pencil. I told them if they need to sharpen the pencil to wait until we're after done with an activity, but they're not listening. You ask for their attention so you can start the next assignment. There's a few people that are still talking to each other. The student that is going to get their pencil he begins sharpening their pencil. And let me think if I tell them to stop sharpening the pencil, then it's going to be turn into a power struggle and they're going to just say, how am I supposed to do my work if I don't have a pencil? I'm just going to leave that alone and let them sharpen their pencil. The students over there that are talking are probably not going to listen anyways. And so maybe I should just start giving my instructions because there's a few students that are listening and it really wouldn't be fair to them, I guess, to just keep waiting or keep arguing or keep trying to get all these other students to do what I'm asking them to do. And oh, I just lost one of the students that looked like they were actually kind of ready to start, but now they started talking to somebody else. It's exhausting being in a classroom that is out of control. You're constantly thinking, how do I handle this problem? And most of the time, you don't come up with a solution that solves the problem. And so you just do your best and hope tomorrow is gonna be better. And maybe that the student that's causing all the problems doesn't show up. But all hope is not lost. Hi, ladies and gents, my name's Tom Gibson. And if you are new here, I help middle school teachers design an engaging classroom experience for their students and a fulfilling teaching experience for themselves. Generally, nobody is engaged or fulfilled in a situation where your middle school classroom is out of control. And so today, let's take a look at what we can actually do about that. Most of my philosophies around classroom management come from two books, Harry Wong's First Day of School. I read this book maybe the summer before my first, second, and third year of teaching. And the Wongs have since come out with a second book that's really focused on classroom management. If you only get one because classroom management is like the thing that you're struggling with, then you probably wanna get this one. And so the common thing that teachers talk about when they're struggling with classroom management is like, well, I told the students what they were supposed to do, but they didn't do it. The most effective strategy that I have seen with classroom management is not only telling them what you want to do, but following the teach, rehearse, reinforce model. What does that mean? The semester before my first year teaching in 2011, I was doing some long-term substitute teaching. There was one sixth grade English classroom that was out of control. I never had to sub for them, but I always heard that classroom five rooms down the hall. You think of like the movie where kids are like standing on the desk and it's that out of control. This was that classroom. And I was doing a job for another class and the principal had asked me, Mr. Gibson, how would you like to be a long-term sub for that classroom down the hall there for the rest of the year? There were three weeks left of school. And I said, yeah, no problem, sure. And then after I told him yes, I went back into the classroom. I was on my lunch break and there weren't any students. And I nearly had a panic attack because I was realizing it was the last week, three weeks of school. These students have had no structure all year. I'm coming into that situation with virtually no experience. This is gonna be hard. And so the weekend before, I. I had spent hours on YouTube and blogs reading up on classroom management. And a lot of the things that I came across had this teach, rehearse, reinforce model when you're asking the students to do some kind of procedure or how you want them to do anything in the classroom. And so I'll never forget that first day, the procedure that I was trying to teach the students was on how I would be getting their attention. I found this call and response method where however I said class, the students would respond with yes. So if I was like class, 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 class. The students would say, yes, yes, yes. And so my very first day, I'm introducing that procedure. I teach them that procedure. I say, okay, in an effort to be able to have a classroom where we can get work done, sometimes I'll need to get your attention. When I get your attention, I'm gonna call class and then you're gonna say yes, the same way I call class. And then I expect it to be silent so that way I can kind of share what I need to share and you guys can all continue working. Now, the key with this here was that I went into this knowing I was going to rehearse rehearse this until the students did it perfectly. If I had to spend all class rehearsing this, so be it. Because the tendency is like, I'm wasting so much class time trying to do this and they're just not listening. I need to just go ahead and teach the content. You're not gonna get through much content if you cannot even get the attention of your students. So even if it took three class periods of just practicing this over and over again until they got it right, at least I would have that the following week and be able to get the students' attention without chaos ensuing. And so I taught them what the procedure was. Then came the rehearsing and the re enforcing. The first time I did it, I was like, 
class, class, class. And maybe 70% of the students were like, yes, yes, yes. It was, still, it was kind of fun. It was like a little game for them at first. But there was a handful of students that just weren't participating. They weren't talking because I was still new and I think I, they were just kind of getting a gauge from me, but they weren't participating. And so instead of moving on, instead of getting frustrated, I said, it's important for us as a collective whole, as a class to be able to do this correctly. We will move on once we have 100% full participation. And I was like kind of smiling about it because now I was really just putting it in their hands. As long as they participated, we can move on. And so try it again. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. And a few more students started buying it, but not everybody. So I said, once we have 100% participation, we will move on from practicing this procedure. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. Now, the reason I think the students didn't get annoyed with me for making them do it over and over again was because I wasn't frustrated. I was very calm. I wasn't like, we'll move on as soon as some people decide to actually participate because now the students are gonna be kind of frustrated with me because I'm frustrated. And then you get a situation where they're like, can we just go on? Can we just move from this? And it's directed towards me. They gang up on me. Now half the class is arguing with me. Now they're not even, now the kids that were doing it are not doing it. And it just becomes this kind of, it just dissolves. So you can't get frustrated. And so I continued. We'll continue once we have 100% participation. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. Now there is starting to be a little bit of pressure on the students that were not participating. The other students like, dude, just come on, just do it. <laughs> I was using peer pressure to positively reinforce the students to meet this expectation because the students didn't want to keep doing this over and over again. And eventually in that class, it came down to one student and we did it maybe five or six times just waiting for him. And I said, and I did not call that student out, which is another important thing. I didn't create a power struggle between me and him. I didn't even really look in his direction. I said, okay, once we have 100% full participation, we will move on. And so it, everyone knew it was on him. We could easily move on if he would just participate in the procedure. And eventually, class. And that student was, yes. And as soon as he did it, I said, thank you. So I expect us to be able to do that every time that I call for your attention and that it would be silent just the way it is right now. And once I did that, they knew that I was serious about following through until we actually practiced the procedure to the point that it was a routine. And the expectation was that all students would follow through with it. Taught the procedure. We rehearsed the procedure over and over again until we got it right without me getting frustrated, which reinforced the procedure to the point that it became a routine, it became a habit in our class. Don't move on until they're doing it exactly the way you want them to do it. Or if you need to modify it to make it something that everyone can do, then make those modifications. But the first time you say, okay, that's good enough, that's what's gonna happen for the rest of the year. You wanna do this with any procedure, any way of doing things that you have your students doing. What to do when you enter the classroom? How do you want your class dismissed? What's the first thing students are going to do when they sit down in your class? What does transitions look like in your classroom? What does a student do if they finish work early? How do you want students working in groups? If you carefully and thoughtfully think through how you want these procedures to look and then you teach it, you rehearse it and you reinforce it, you're going to have a completely different classroom experience. And at the time of recording this, many teachers are either doing distance learning or in-person or hybrid due to COVID-19. This is all the more important now that we have procedures of exactly how students need to be to maintain social distancing, to make sure that their masks stay on, to make sure that everyone in the classroom is staying safe. Teaching procedures are a big part of classroom management, but they are not the ultimate when it comes to classroom management and classroom culture. I've put together a playlist of videos that have my best classroom management techniques and tactics and strategies that you can click on right over there to hopefully help you design an engaging classroom experience for your students and a more fulfilling teaching experience for yourself. My name is Tom Gibson. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you over on the playlist.